Okay, I'm back and I have a quick unboxing and actually first impressions of the iPhone 16 Pro. And I say first impressions because I actually have had the Desert Titanium 16 Pro. Whoop, that's not it. <laughs> Desert Titanium 16 Pro. Uh, since yesterday, launch day, this is what I had pre-ordered. But I have a little buyer's remorse about the color. Don't get me wrong, it is a nice color, but I went back with the natural titanium. So, um, simple unpackaging as always. There's one tab, second tab, and there is the phone itself in the natural titanium color. And of course we know that uh, it comes with the USB-C to USB-C cable and some basic paperwork, so Apple has minimized the packaging. So what I showed on the screen earlier is my standard uh, 15 Pro that I switched from the Max to a few months ago, and I've actually been enjoying using it. I you know, after using the Pro Max size for a few months, and even a few years, I had the 13 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max, I was kind of uh, getting tired of the massive size. So when Apple increased the size slightly to the 16 Pro, I thought, hey, it's a nice compromise. I get a little bit bigger battery, a little bit bigger screen, and um, I still get a one-handable phone, which is what I have experience with the 16 Pro. So here, we'll just take a quick look at the color comparison between the 15 Pro Natural Titanium and the 16 Pro Natural Titanium. And at least through the camera, on the back, I kind of have sunlight coming through. It looks mostly the same. I feel like the camera rings over here on the 16 Pro are a little bit cooler toned. And the 15 Pro, I think, has slightly more warm undertone. And I know that for the side rails, they have switched from brushed titanium on the 15 Pro to a polished titanium. Uh, actually, it's not polished, it's like a sandblasted titanium on the 16 Pro. So over here, you can kind of see a comparison. And of course, I might have some fingerprints on the 15 Pro over here. But yeah, the 16 Pro uh, titanium rail actually looks to be a little bit shinier. You know, I think there were some rumors uh, before that it would be a polished titanium rail, and it is not. Actually, the Apple Watch has polished titanium. But over here, you can see that it's kind of a cooler color. And then, of course, we can compare it to the Desert Titanium, which is much warmer, of course. Has kind of a cream back. And copperish, you know, uh, side rails. To me, it's kind of uh, like a bronze copper with the hint of pink underneath. Depends on the lighting. When my wife took a look at it last night, she was like, this is a pink phone. <laughs> but over here in the lighting, I think it has kind of a bronze copperish look. It is a nice phone, uh, a handsome phone, if you ask me. But um, I just wasn't loving it, and I think I'm going to go back to the natural titanium. And I think the natural titanium will fit better uh, with more cases. It's more of a neutral color. So this year, I think the winners for me in the Pro line are the natural titanium, and then if I had a second choice, it would prob probably be black titanium. So let's go ahead and peel this off, and I will set this up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and the 16 Pro is all set up. I have my SIM card transferred over and everything was smooth as usual. So as I was saying, I wanted to discuss some of my observations after using it for 24 hours. And the first thing I'll touch on is the capture button because that is the main new features. And that touches on kind of one of the reasons why I did want to upgrade from the 15 Pro, even though it is kind of a minor upgrade. And I think that's kind of a great thing that uh, the technology is so mature that you don't have to upgrade every year. You know, if you're on a 12 Pro or 13 Pro or, you know, um, you're still perfectly fine. But for me, there's some material changes that I think are worth considering. Namely, what I'm looking forward to is the supposedly slightly improved battery life on the 15 Pro. Because as I mentioned, I am kind of a fan now of the smaller size after having used the Pro Max size. For a couple of years i'm just looking forward to having a more comfortable in-hand experience um, that being said the screen has increased slightly in size to 6.3 inches so i think that is not that common for apple to do i think the last time they increased the screen size and here's the 15 pro is when they went from the 11 pro to the 12 pro so that is kind of a, a big change if you ask me um, of course there is the physical change of the bezel being slightly thinner um, it doesn't, you know, might not really come up on the camera, but I do notice it in the first day that I've used it. I have noticed that the bezels look a little bit thinner. Uh, other minor things that I've noticed is actually that it looks to me like the radius of the phone is slightly more curved. So over here on the 15 Pro, you can see it, the corner radius is a little more uh, squared off 
Whereas over here, it looks a little more rounded to me. Um, and maybe someone can confirm that in the comments, but I did notice that. The other thing I noticed, interestingly, is that the dynamic island here, while I have it in the close-up, it looks like the dynamic island on the 16 Pro is shifted a little bit lower than the 15 Pro. You can see that, you know, where the wallpaper is peeking through. The 15 Pro has a little bit of a skinnier uh, profile there, so that's another interesting change. Um, in my day of using the 16 Pro, I have not uh, noticed that, you know, uh, changing the content or anything like that at all, but it is something I've noticed uh, comparing it. And uh, I um, did get sidetracked, but I was going to mention that in addition to the longer battery life, the other uh, major change to me is the addition of a new input method with the camera capture button. Um, I think that's uh, a pretty radical change, and I'm curious to see, you know, uh, how that'll affect my usage of the phone. So um, those are two things, the battery life, the or three things, the battery life, uh, the slight increase in the screen size, and the addition of a new input method that I think are pretty big changes uh, in the 16 Pro compared to previous iPhones because uh, Apple is so good about um, trickling in change over time that um, these changes are, are they're kind of new. So uh, I want to touch on what it's been like in the first 24 hours using the capture button. I've been stuck at home because I had uh, surgery on my knee to repair an ACL, so have not really used the camera much other than clicking around on it. But I will say that it takes a little bit of getting used to. For one thing, it is pretty much flush with the frame of the phone. So I use my phone mostly left-handed. And with my fingers, I can't really feel it out. It kind of lands where my ring finger is. Right there, you see that I press the button. And it has different functionality. So um, the action button, for example, to activate it, you have to kind of press and hold. And then it scans for Face ID. And then it'll open up what the action is. Let me see if I can get that. Oh, I have to enter the password. So we'll skip doing that. But I've gotten accustomed to pressing and holding. So initially, with the camera capture, that's what I was trying to do. But if you're doing a single click, you can't press and hold. See, if I'm pressing and pressing, it's not gonna do anything until I let go of it. Then you see the screen activate. So that's one that to keep note of. Uh, the other thing I've observed is that when you do the single click, the camera will only open if it recognizes that the phone is unlocked. So as you've seen that if you're not looking at the phone with face ID and you press the button, it's not launching the camera. So I didn't like that function of the camera capture. And what I discovered is if you go into settings, uh, scroll down to camera, and then you have the camera control, you can change that to a double click. And the nice thing about double click is that it'll open up the camera regardless of the unlock status of the phone. So that I kind of like. So if you have the phone in your pocket, you can feel for the camera capture button, double click, and you're already in the camera and you can start firing. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing I'll mention is this whole touch interface um, is a little fiddly, uh, you know, with the zoom. It's all right, but you know, when you're on the zoom screen, uh, it does tend to stop there, stopped on the 5X. Here it'll stop on the 2X. But over here, I skipped the 1X and went to the 0.5X. So how to use that is a little fiddly. And the other thing I noticed is that when you uh, change it, so if you go here to camera, you will have the 0.5x, 1x, 2x. So this is only the stops in between. I prefer this because these are the locations where you get the highest quality of your photos. But what's missing for me is over here on the 1x, uh, it doesn't have the 1.2x or the 1.5x. So here, when I go to the software, I sometimes bounce between the 28 and the 35 if I wanna frame something. So here's these roses. So here I might like the 35 millimeter framing better than the 24 millimeter framing, which you know captures more of the coffee and the remote. So this button over here does not have that. So I will probably use this, but I wish Apple, or I hope in a future software update, Apple can add the in-between frames. And then the other thing I'll mention is that the button remembers what your last setting was. So here, if I go back into it, double click. When I soft press, you see over there, it's already at the camera. So you gotta double press and you can see it's a little finicky to use. If you're on tones, let's say, which I which I also like, you can bring down the tone. You can do it on the screen or on the swipe action. So let's say I bring the tone down, which should bring the shadows down. I'll take this picture, turn off the camera, go back into it. And then when I soft press again, 
See, it automatically goes to tone, even though maybe this time what I want to do for the next photo is zoom. And then to get back to the zoom is kind of fiddly. So I think maybe the camera capture will take a little getting used to, but to me, it's pretty cool that it's there, what the utility of it will be and how useful it'll be over time. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, that's about it. Coming from the 15 Pro, uh, those are kind of my observations in the first day that I've used it, the increase to the 6.3 inch size of screen. I have not really noticed to be a hindrance. Um, what I like is that the uh, phone is still a very similar width and that I appreciate because the width is very important to me to swipe across. It is slightly wider. You know, if you're using a 15 Pro with a very thin case, uh, maybe that's what the difference is. It might come up over here on the camera. It is slightly wider on the 16 Pro but I can still kind of comfortably get my thumb across, which was a little more of a reach on the Pro Max size. So that I like. So it seems like Apple has just increased the height of the phone a little bit. So those are the early first impressions and the unboxing. Um, hope that helps some of you out there. Thanks for watching. Oh, I will add one last thing is that this, uh, this half of the video was recorded on the 16 Pro Max with the Desert Titanium. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about what the audio sounds like compared to my uh, Rode Mic Mini that I started the video with. So this is using the spatial audio recording, which is another new feature for the iPhones, which I think is a software algorithm. I'm pretty sure the 15 uh, series and older iPhones also have four microphones. There's a microphone down here, one back here. There should be one in the earpiece and maybe one somewhere else or something. So I believe it is just a software algorithm that's doing the spatial audio. Uh, but still, you know, as someone who's uh, kind of an amateur video content creator and stuff like that, I think it's neat that Apple have included that. So I'm curious myself to see what the audio sounds like. So uh, just adding that a little bit at the end. Okay, see you guys at the next video.